Okay, here we have a carbon-12 nuclei. Here we have a carbon-13 nuclei, which got an extra neutron. Here, this is a carbon-14. It's got two extra neutrons compared to carbon-12. These are what we call isotopes. They have the same number of protons, and that's why they're, they're carbon, otherwise they wouldn't be carbon. Uh, but they have different number of neutrons. So carbon-14, like I said, has two extra neutrons. Now carbon-14, because it's got those two extra neutrons, it makes it unstable. It makes the nuclei unstable, meaning the nucleus will decay randomly and spontaneously. We'll come on to the decays in a minute, but what do I mean by randomly and spontaneously? It means that we can't predict when it's going to decay, and also we can't influence the decay by increasing the temperature or the pressure, like in a chemical reaction. We can't do that. It's just completely random and, and you can't be influenced. So one of the possible decays is an alpha decay. This tends to happen when the nucleus is a bit too large uh, and it's emitting two protons and two neutrons straight out of the nucleus. So the symbol for the alpha particle is four and two. Okay, It doesn't have any electrons on the outside. It's basically just a helium nucleus. And when this gets ejected, let's see what happens. For example, with thorium, you can see the thorium's uh, proton number has gone down by two and its mass number has gone down by four so but the top numbers on the top left hand side and right hand side need to be uh, the same another possible decay is a beta minus decay this tends to happen when the nucleus has too many neutrons and the neutron inside the nucleus turns into a proton okay this proton is going to stay inside the nucleus however an electron is going to get ejected out okay fast moving electron is ejected out and of course, uh, to conserve lepton number, a electron entry neutrino is also ejected out as well. Okay, so a beta particle is just a fast moving electron, so you can use either of these symbols. The mass is very small, so we just give it a mass number zero. And because its charge is negative, we have a minus one negative charge. Here's an example of a beta decay. Got potassium here decaying into calcium. Uh, and you can see the number of protons has actually increased okay but the mass number hasn't changed because what's happened is the proton has turned uh, the neutron has turned to a proton and that proton has stayed inside the nucleus so the number total number of nucleons hasn't actually changed here we've got a beta plus decay now this one has got too many protons the proton turns into a neutron the neutron is going to stay inside the nucleus and you've got a positron being emitted and the conserved lepton number you've got a, a neutrino electron neutrino being emitted so the symbol for a positron is uh, a, a basically a proton with a positive charge or a beta plus particle there and here's an example so the magnesium so inside the magnesium the one of the protons has turned into a neutron so the proton number has gone down however the nucleon number hasn't changed because like i said um, a proton turning into a neutron just means that the neutron uh, the nucleon number doesn't hasn't actually changed it's still the same number of nucleons okay finally we have gamma decay Okay, so gamma decay tends to happen after alpha or beta decay, and this is when the nucleus has a bit too much energy, emits a gamma wave. A gamma wave is a really high frequency electromagnetic wave, so it doesn't have any mass or charge and like that, so it's just zero, zero, and it doesn't actually change the nucleus that much. So uh, the nucleus hasn't, the number of protons, the number of neutrons hasn't changed at all. What's happened is that this thorium here had a bit too much uh, energy, and it's what we say is it was in an excited nucleus state just like our electrons have energy levels the nucleus has an energy level as well and this one had a bit too much energy and it emitted that energy in the form of a gamma photon and we can work out the energy of a gamma photon using e equals hf again that's been emitted and the nucleus hasn't changed